Well, welcome once again to the Doctor of Digital podcast, and my special guest today is Robert Lee. Now, there are several reasons why I wanted him on the show, and you'll see because the basic introduction, you know, we're looking for. So, he's the founder of Lessix Agency. This is a full marketing agency with a vision to doubling sales in 90 days. And now you know why I want him on the show, because everybody's interested in that. He has a digital marketer certified partner. He's got over 15 years experience. So with that, welcome to the show, Robert. Thanks for taking out some time to see us today. Appreciate you you having me join y'all. You bet. Now, a lot of people are interested and said I gave you a basic brief introduction. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how is it you got started in your field, especially? Yeah. So, so at this point, uh, like you said, we're, we service uh, small businesses primarily in helping build and plan and have a vision for growth. And the idea being that we want to put you on the path to doubling your sales in 90 days using our growth from frameworks and, and basically understanding who your customers are and how you connect with them and build a deeper relationship with them. That's what we do. And the, the way we got there is kind of a, long country album of sometimes heartache and sometimes excitement. <laughs> uh, but after after college, I had this vision of being this big, powerful uh, political consultant. And, and, oh. and political communications is something that we still do to this day, okay. uh, which I know is always a dicey subject. But sure. our vision is the same thing there. Help our, help our clients communicate mm-hmm. and connect with people on a much deeper level and, and, and make their lives better. So... Uh, in any case, we got our start there and uh, eventually made my way into uh, an engineering firm outside of Chicago where I learned uh, process and lean and Six Sigma, uh, which is the the combination of uh, makes our name. And then eventually started getting back on the path to uh, that political consulting side, but coming mm-hmm. to the realization that, hey, all we're doing here is marketing. All we're doing here is building relationships with people. And so that's how I got on the path of becoming a full service uh, marketing consultant and and advertiser uh, for small businesses. It's definitely a much happier environment uh, than politics uh, because we all agree on the same thing in that place, which is we want companies to grow and be successful. Sure. So if it's a long country album, it's got to have something about dogs and pickup trucks, I guess. So oh, that's- it, oh, it definitely does. Definitely <laughs> does. So it's been around for like 15 years. Now, a lot of things have changed. So I'm curious now if you could address the question of what have you seen as some of the biggest changes within the last 15 years in your experience? Well, well, the tech side of marketing and communications is definitely making leaps and bounds. And just like any technological growth, it, it seems to grow exponentially. So 15 years ago, the things that we were doing to connect with people uh, were more traditional, right? Yeah. Scheduling radio interviews, m- buying radio spots, doing cable mm-hmm. television inserts, okay. uh, direct mail. And these things uh, tended to be, there wasn't a lot of growth in options. Well, obviously, since the advent of iPhones and mobile devices and streaming, and Web 3.0 at this point, the technology has changed so incredibly much that we're not talking about three or five different options of how we market our company. Hmm. But we're talking about literally dozens upon dozens of options and how do we start to choose the best ones so that we're not wasting our money on all these different shiny objects. Uh, because you can still do traditional radio, but now you have podcasting uh, hmm. as, as we're doing right now, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you have direct mail still, uh, but you also have Facebook and Facebook is different from Google and Google is different from Pinterest and Pinterest is different from advertising on Reddit. I mean, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of marketing opportunities for every organization of every type. And so the change is really, it's been great for small business people to have all of these options, but it's also been pretty terrifying. Uh, because there are so many options and there are so many people out there that are h- willing to help you spend your money on any option is, that's that's the next best, greatest thing uh, in, in how to grow your business. So, 
Now, with that 15 years, and you mentioned a couple of things now, there are things that are changing and changing pretty rapidly. So I'm really curious if you could identify two or three or whatever you might come up with. What are some of the hot growth areas? Because as you say, I think it's a little bit confusing because people are going to spend their money on a lot of things. But what would you say are some of the hot growth areas that if you're a small business, what should you be thinking about now and currently? So what are those areas? So the first thing that you definitely need to think about is how you organize and manage your data plus your communications. So a lot of business owners now have opportunities to not only have a CRM that they can input data into, but Mm -hmm. input data into and that it automatically triggers dozens of pieces of communication. So we have a platform called Lisex Pro that's ours that when we enter somebody in, say, on a form, on a lead form, we can instantly pump them into a Facebook audience. We can instantly automate the process of email and text message communication. We could even go as far as to automate the process of sending hand-produced postcards saying, hey, great great to hear from you. So that's the first thing is small business owners have to be willing to invest in those kind of all in one tools. Not that they need everything in those tools, but they need to be able to invest in in something that helps them save time while continuing to build their their relationships with their customers. And then, of course, everybody's hot topic this day is AI. How are we using AI in the workplace, communications and accounting, whatever it might be? And it's a big question, but small business owners definitely have to be willing to dive in and play around with it because they are on the frontier of what AI can do for organizations. And if we just allow it to be dictated to us by, by big, big tech, yeah. then, then we're, we're not taking advantage of what the opportunity is in front of us. Uh, again, it goes back to what I said, it can be very scary, but there's a ton of opportunity there. Mm-hmm. Now, with all of these tools and new things and hot areas or what have you, So I'm curious, let's say you're a business owner and you're listening to this and listening to you, what kinds of things should a business owner be thinking of, particularly a small business, because that's your niche. So what should they be thinking about currently with all of the options that are available and what kinds of things should they be thinking about currently? So anybody, every 90 days, and it Mm -hmm. doesn't matter what type of business you're in, if you're somebody that wears multiple hats, you're the, the garbage collector, as well as the human resources manager, as well as the CEO, then you have to just stop and ask yourself, are we reaching our ideal customers? Do we know who our ideal customers are? And what is the, the, the journey they take with us from when they learn about who we are to how they become not only a customer once, but customers over and over and over again. This is what we call the the customer value journey. And Mm -hmm. if you are not taking time to understand what that is and reviewing it every quarter, then you're setting your business up for stagnation, for potential failure. Because it doesn't matter what all these different shiny objects are. If you don't understand how to build a build a relationship with your customers, then you're you're destined to fail at some level. You you might not be able to exit in the way that you want to. Uh, The business just might fold. The business might just overwhelm you. And and we we try to always bring people back to the simple, personal process that helps you grow your company consistently and predictably. So this would be not like you set up a business plan and that's it. It's going to run on its own. But what you're really saying is let's look at this from time to time because the conditions change and there are so many things that are happening technology and so quickly that you really need to review again and again and pretty consistently. 100%. 100%. So we always liken the marketing process uh, to being a similar, not identical, but similar process Uh, to how you keep, uh, how you identify and grow and maintain and nurture uh, relationships with your significant others. 
And if you'll uh, indulge me for just 30 seconds, yeah. I always like to tell this to potential customers, but, but I met my wife online and it's a perfect reflection of what the customer value journey is. Okay. We caught each other's attention through the yeah. online profiles. We exchanged messages when we were ready. We exchanged phone numbers, met for coffee. Uh, I remember the exact moment that I looked at my wife and said, I don't know if this will last forever, but I know I want it to. Hmm. And so we both had those moments. And then we eventually started dating exclusively and uh, introduced each other to our families and got engaged and bought a house and got married and had kids. And, and now we're going through, through the stages of a marriage that's nearly a decade old. Uh, and trying to navigate how it is that we we handle uh, two two great children, one of who uh, one of which can can be a, a real handful at times, right? That's a normal, healthy human relationship, right. and that's how you have to treat your relationships with your customers. Hmm. Now, obviously, it manifests itself in very different ways, but oftentimes, if you understand how those relationships change over time and how you develop new relationships with new ideal customers, then you have a better understanding of how to grow your business than probably 95% of the other people out there that just say, well, I gotta, I gotta be on Google. Everybody's on, everybody's doing Google search ads. I gotta be on there uh, or Facebook. I gotta do social media. So uh, focus on your relationships and how that relationship grows. It's good advice for life. It's good advice for business. And that's, that's how we try to approach things. So that you can yeah. handle those changes much what more. What you're describing is not a transactional relationship, which is a good example of the wife, obviously, right? You know, she mm -hmm. you do this and she produces children. Well, it's not if that would be a transaction. But what you're saying in business, you're not just doing transactions and this person is paying you and then you deliver a service, but it's a relationship and you're trying to keep alive a relationship, which as a marriage, obviously you need to do and you got to spend time and effort. 100%. Re remember, it doesn't matter if you sell B2C or B2B. The mm -hmm. person who is deciding to buy from you is making an emotional decision and they're going to justify it in logic. So if you don't connect with their emotions, if you don't connect with their heart, you're never going to connect with your head and you just turn what you, what, whatever you do, whether it be a service or build a widget, uh, you just commoditize it. And that's the, that's the quickest way to failure is to turn yourself into a commodity. Uh, but when people, when people know that you're a good person and that you're there to help them have a better life and whatever role they serve, they'll come back to you over and over and over again. So it's a win-win for everybody, right? Yep. And it's a, it does seem the way that we make decisions, right? So we make decisions really emotionally and then we justify it by our brains. We say, okay, that's what I was going to do. But I really, they want to have a sense of who and what you are as a human being. And they want to know that have a relationship. I think key pointer is always trust. If they don't trust you. You're not going to get anywhere with them. 100%. 100%. You know, in a very crowded space, I'll put it this way. There's a lot of marketers out there. I know you've identified some unique parts of your business, but I'm wondering if you could say, okay, well, what's different about me? What's different about your agency and somebody else? Because there's a lot of options out there. So what kinds of things do you offer business owners and what would you do and what are you able to do to assist them? Well, the first thing that, that we like to tell business owners is we're not here to spend your money. So we are not here to tell you, you have to do specific ads in this way uh, I just had a, I just had a, a, a discovery session with, with a business owner and they immediately said, well, we've done this and we've done that. And yeah. can you do SEO and can you do social media? Cause I don't do social media. I was just like, look, I, all of this conversation is premature because the one thing, the one person you haven't talked to me about is your customer. You haven't told me who your ideal customer is. You haven't, you haven't described to me the process by which you get them to know about who you are, but once they know who you are, how you bring them in, how you offer them value, how you make their life better. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I think sets us apart for a lot of small business agencies okay. is everybody, all these small businesses. And I know because I'm bombarded with it, bombarded with them every day, yeah. you're bombarded with ads, with phone calls, with mail pieces that say, I will do X service for you. And X service is one, two, and three. 
And we get away from that. We say we help make your business okay. something you own instead of your business owning you. Mm-hmm. Would you like to be a business owner or would you like to be business owned? Yeah. And we start with that question. And in the first 90 days, if we don't help you provide or we don't provide an answer to how you own your business instead of your business owning you, we don't accept work anymore because it isn't in your best interest and it isn't in our best interest to continue that, that relationship. Mm -hmm. And because at the end of the day, like you said, anybody can wake up and call themselves a marketer. Anybody there, there's no license. There's no governing agency. You can wake up one day and say, you know what, I'm going to go out there and help people with marketing. And, uh, it, it is one of those things that I came to realize if we don't invest in our customers on the front end, we'll never have customers that, that stay with us for a long period of time on the back end. Now, that's a very intangible benefit. I understand that. Uh, but we try to connect with our customers emotionally. We, we try to, like I say, make them own, help them own their business as opposed to their business owning them. Interesting. We've talked about your background. We've talked about some of the changes, the hot topics, and how you approach business differently from some other folks, which would might be interesting. And hopefully people would be interested. How would you recommend that they get a hold of you? And what's the best way they can reach you and have a conversation to see if you can assist them? Yeah, absolutely. So if you visit our website, lesix.agency, uh, you'll be able to get all the information uh, about who we are and, and what we do. Most importantly, if you visit our website, you'll see a number of buttons that say book your discovery session. Mm. If you book a free discovery session with us, we actually go through these frameworks. We train you how to start doing this work and give you the, the templates you need, the understanding of those templates that you need, and actually some AI prompts that will help you get those use those tools in a matter of minutes as opposed to hours. Uh, And we have this great free book. I mean, we we talk about investing in people all the time. Uh, We're located in Atlanta and we have this great friend that's an author named Kevin Scott who wrote this amazing book called Eight Essential Exchanges. Hmm. And so we actually like to give that free to anybody that schedules a discovery session uh, because it's a book that talks about how in our lives we give up good things for great things. And that's what we're asking our customers to do with us is to give up some things that you might feel comfortable in for something that will make your company absolutely amazing. Uh, So once again, if you go to leasix.agency, click on the button that says uh, free discovery session, uh, we'll be more than happy to spend an hour, hour and a half of time with you. And you will walk away with something that will help your business grow, regardless if you ever talk to us again or not. Sounds awesome. Yeah, well, thank you, Robert, for spending some time. We learned a lot, and hopefully the audience did too. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you taking time out and chatting today. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. You bet. So if you've liked the show, make sure that you subscribe, like, and positively review on Apple Podcasts. That helps out a lot. So if you want to hear more people like Robert, that's how you can help the show out. Until next time, Dr. Digital signing out. Deus Vault.